of salvation would be released, that we could accept Jesus as our Lord and Savior. And as I was sharing a few minutes ago, the title of the message is Keep the Dream Alive. Each one of you has been impregnated with a dream, a vision that God has birthed you. The Bible talks about in Esther, the book of Esther, it says that you for, uh, have been born for such a time as this. Who knows? Her uncle or her cousin had said that who knows that you were born for such a time as this. And each and every one of you on this planet, each and one of you in this building, each one of you listening, you have been born for a purpose. And I want to just touch on, um, there was a gentleman who had committed suicide this last week. And it was really a jolt. And whether you know him, he's on television and um, very popular. And, and it was really <clears throat> disheartening that he did that. He was 40 years old and things happen and, you know, whatever. But he had so much more to give. But the devil had lied to him. That was the way out. And I'm, the reason I'm even sharing this is because, as I said a few minutes ago, you have been born for such a time as this. You have been put on this planet for a reason. And the devil knows it. And the devil can see more than you realize. He can start seeing the, the hand of God upon you. He can see that you are drawn closer to the Lord. He can also see that there's something about you that is special that I need to get rid of. Because you can be a threat to me, the devil says. And so if I can talk you into giving, uh, ending your life, then you know what? You're out of the way. I don't have to worry about you anymore. So I want to encourage you to hang on. I want, you to, I want to encourage you that don't give up. And I say that a lot because God has a mighty plan for your life. And it's not only supposed to affect you, but it will affect others. And as I said, this person is no longer on this planet. And I thought a lot about that this week. But his family and his friends are still on this planet. And they're having to deal with this person no longer on this planet. And the same for you. If for whatever reason that you're not on this planet anymore, you are going to be missed. And your spot, your place that God has for you, that there's something special God wants to do through you that matters. That only you can do it. Now, there's other people that have similar talents and gifts as you do, but you have a specific assignment by God to fulfill on this planet. Just as Mary did, the mother of Jesus, she had a specific purpose to carry the baby, the son of God, to give birth to this son, and to watch her son be crucified. The one who was born to her, that she had to watch him be the sacrificial lamb to be sacrificed so that we could be born again, that we could have everlasting life. Well, let's go into the book of Genesis, chapter 37. And as I said, the title is Keep the Dream Alive. And what was really interesting as I was preparing for this, you know, it's amazing when God will give me scripture and he'll give me the title and then he'll start giving me scripture. And sometimes he gives me scripture first. But as I began to study and as I began to prepare, I was amazed. I'm going, wow, God, look at what you're doing and what you want to say to your people. So in Genesis chapter 37, let me get there. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word this morning. We thank you to accomplish its purpose. I thank you that people are listening to your word and being touched by your word. <clears throat> Lord, I just continue to stay out of the way so that you can have your way through your word. Speak to us today. Holy Spirit, reveal the truth of your word to each and every one. In Jesus' name, amen. Um, I heard from somebody last week. They're in Mexico. They were in Mexico, and they said, I watched your program, and it was exactly what I needed to hear. People are watching us in the Philippines, in Mexico, in all parts of the country, and you're a part of that. You're a part of what God is doing outside this building. Those watching right now, you know what? You can partner with us. You can be a part of this and be a part of this and continue to share this with people you know. Because I believe that the Holy Spirit is ministering through this ministry. And be a part of that. So in Genesis chapter 37, verse 2. 
Thank you, Lord. Praise you, Jesus. This is the account of Jacob. Joseph, a young man of 17, was tending the flocks with his brothers. Hallelujah. I'm going to skip over. His father's wives, and he brought, his, he brought their father, or anyway, I want to skip over to verse 3. Now Israel loved Joseph more than any of his other sons, because he had been born to him in his old age. And he made a richly, uh, richly ornamented robe for him. When his brothers saw that their father loved him more than any of them, they hated him and could not speak a kind word of him. They saw the father giving him favor. And I want you to just get in the spirit with me this morning. I'm not talking about your siblings. I'm not talking about people around you, but, but I want you to know that God the Father, let's just put God there in place of Jacob. And, 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 and God uh, has shown you favor, and God has blessed you, and God has taken care of you, and there's people all around you that are jealous of what God's doing. They knew you when you were the old you. They have seen you come through thick and thin. They, they've seen you come through the storm, and they hate on you, and they despise you, and they talk about you because God is blessing you. You know, it's amazing because through the years, um, God has promoted me. He's promoted me naturally. He's promoted me spiritually. And uh, even my last job, there was a, a person there that was there longer than me, and we applied for the same job. And I wasn't necessarily applying for the same job as management, but we both ended up applying for the job. Well, I got the job, and she didn't, and she was not happy. But see, what happened was God gave me favor, and God promoted me over her. And there's been other instances where God has promoted me over people. And, and I give him all the praise, and I give him all the glory, because I want to serve the Lord with all my heart. I want to be used to the Lord with all my heart. And so God has promoted me. And the same for you. What God does for me, he will do for you. And there's going to be people that are going to be jealous of you. There are going to be people that are hated, hate, you know, haters and all these things. But you cannot get focused on them. You've got to get focused on the Lord and know that he has a, a purpose for you. He's giving you a dream. He's giving you a vision of your future. And things happen, but we'll get into it as we go. So going on. It says, when his brothers saw that he, their father loved him more than any of them, verse 4, they hated him and could not speak a kind word of him. Joseph had a dream. And when he told his brothers, they hated him all the more. Sometimes you've got to be careful who you share your dreams with. So they hated him even, all the more. He said to them, listen to the dream I had. I would have to say Joseph may not have operated in total wisdom in when to reveal this, but you know what? It's in the word, and there's a plan, there's a purpose for it, and there's a reason for it, and God used it. Listen to the dream I had. We were binding sheaves of grain out in the field when suddenly my sheaf rose and stood upright while your sheaves gathered around mine and bowed down to it. Now, they already hate you already, and so you're telling them that you're going to rise up and they're going to buy down to you. Ooh, do you think they're going to get mad <laughs> even more? His brothers said to him, do you intend to reign over us? Will you actually rule us? And they hated him all the more because of his dream and what he had said. Then it goes on. It says, then he had another dream and he told it to his brothers. Listen, he said, I had another dream, and this time the sun and the moon and 11 stars were bowing down to me. When he told his father as well as his brothers, his father rebuked him and said, What is this dream you had? Will your mother and I and your brothers actually come and bow down to the ground before you? His brothers were jealous of him, but his father kept the matter in mind. Let's go on a little bit farther. Now his brothers had gone to gaze their flocks near Shechem. And Israel said to Joseph, as you know, your brothers are gazing the flocks near Shechem. Come, I'm going to send you to them. Very well, he replied. 
So he said to him, go and see if all is well with your brothers and with their flocks and bring word back to me. Then he sent him off from the valley of Hebron. When Joseph arrived in Shechem, a man found him wandering around in the fields and asked him, what are you looking for? He replied, I'm looking for my brothers. Can you tell me where they are gazing the flocks? They have moved on from here, the man answered. I heard them say, let's go to Dothan. So Joseph went after his brothers and found them near Dothan. But they saw him in the distance, and before he reached them, they plotted to kill him. Here comes the dreamer. Here comes the dreamer. They plotted to kill him. They hated him. They saw the favor of their father upon him. They wanted to eliminate him and get rid of him. If only they had known the future that lies ahead. If they had only known how their brother Joseph would be used for their good, for the benefit not only for them, but for the whole nation. All the Israelites would be blessed through Joseph. See, not only does God want you to be blessed, and he doesn't only want to bless you and your household, he wants to use you to bless your nation. And what is a nation? It is a group of people, whether it's the United States, whether it's Mexico, whether it's the Philippines, wherever it's, it's your community, whatever it is, God wants to use you to be a blessing. Well, no, Pastor Tony, that can't be. Stop talking against God's plan for your life. Well, you don't know what I've gone through. You don't know what I've done. But God does. God knew, knows the end from the beginning. He knew that Joseph would go through what he went through. The Bible says that our footsteps are ordered of the Lord. God can turn what the enemy means for harm for our good and the good of others. I'm here to stir you up today to encourage you that this Christmas you can receive the ultimate gift Jesus, number one, but hope, Christ in you, the hope of glory. That if you've lost hope, today is the day to stir that up inside you. Stir Jesus up inside you, that hope of glory, so that you can be used for the glory of God to affect many lives, to touch many people. Stop looking at what you don't have and begin to say, Lord, you got everything I need. And Lord, you put me on this planet for a reason. You have equipped me. You are equipping me. You are preparing me. God, you're going to lead me and guide me. I'm going to continue on. I don't want to leave this planet until I have fulfilled all your purpose for my life so that I can make a difference while I'm here on this planet. Can you say amen? Let's go on a little bit farther. Here comes the dreamer, they said to each other. Come now, let's kill him and throw him into one of those cisterns and say that a furious, or ferocious, I should say, animal devoured him. Then we will see what comes of his dreams. Hallelujah. When, when Reuben heard this, he tried to rescue him from their hands. Let's not take his life, he said. Don't shed any blood. Throw him into the cistern or into the pit here in the desert, but don't lay a hand on him. Reuben said uh, this to rescue him from them and take him back to his father. So when Joseph came to his brothers, they stripped him of his robe, the richly ornamented robe he was wearing, and they took him and threw him into the cistern. Now the cistern was empty. There was no water in it. They threw him in the pit. Now, as the story goes, not only did he get thrown in the pit, but he was taken out and he was sold into slavery. Then he went into a house, a Potiphar's house, and, and he, you know what's interesting about Joseph? He had the favor of God through every situation he went through. The same for you. 
You have the favor of God no matter how bad things seem to be, no matter how things seem to be, no matter what's up ahead, no matter what you're thinking or feeling, you have the favor of God. And the devil wants you to to think that, nope, you're going to go down, you're going to lose everything, you're going to die, you're going to this, you're going to do that. Oh, you're different. You're not like anybody else. Everybody else has got joy. Everybody else has got money. Everybody else has got health. Everybody's got all this stuff. But you know what? He wants you to think it's just you that's going through this. But I'm here to tell you, there's others going through this. But see, God had a plan for Joseph. No matter what his brothers did to him, God was still on the throne. God was leading him and guiding him through all these things that his brothers were doing and people were doing. So he gets in Potiphar's house, and he had favor with Potiphar. Then his wife hits on him and wants him and he says, No, I'm not gonna do that to my master. And then what does she do? She accuses him of hitting on her, and he gets thrown in prison. And then he interprets some dreams. It, it's went on for years. He was going through all this stuff for years. It didn't happen overnight that he came to the other side, but he was going through this for years. But the Lord was with him, and the Lord gave him favor, and the Lord gave him favor in prison, even. Then finally he gets out of prison, and then Pharaoh has a dream that he interpreted. And the dream basically was there's going to be seven years of abundance, and then there would be seven years of famine. And so through those seven years, Joseph, hallelujah, he, so he interprets the dream for Pharaoh, and Pharaoh promotes him as second in command of the land. Now, let me tell you, it doesn't matter what people does to you. What matters is what God is doing for you. Can you say amen? Are you with me this morning? That God has a big plan, and it doesn't matter what's going on around you. God is on the throne, not man. Well, go to Genesis chapter 41. Thank you, Lord. In verse 41. So Pharaoh said said to Joseph, I hereby put you in charge of the whole land of Egypt. He was thrown in the pit. He was thrown into slavery. He was falsely accused and thrown into prison. And when he interpreted the dreams to a couple of these guys, he asked them, hey, make sure you tell somebody outside that I'm in here. And they didn't do it. But God got him out of prison. And God promoted him, second in command. Then Pharaoh took his signet ring from his finger and put it on Joseph's finger. He dressed him in robes of fine linen and put a gold chain around his neck. He said he had him ride in a chariot as second in command, and men shouted before him, make way. Thus he put him in charge of the whole land of Egypt. Then Pharaoh said to Joseph, I am Pharaoh, but without your word, no one will lift a hand or a foot in all of Egypt. Woo, praise God. Speak about promotion, right? Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. I'm going to skip over. Hallelujah. And it basically goes on. It says, and Joseph went throughout the land of Egypt. In verse 46, Joseph was 30 years old when he entered the service of Pharaoh the king. And it says, he went out from Pharaoh's presence and traveled throughout Egypt. He didn't get his breakthrough overnight. It took years. It took time. And you might be thinking, when am I going to get my breakthrough? When am I going to see the promises of God? You just got to keep on standing. You got to keep on standing. You got to keep on believing. You got to keep on declaring, God has a plan for my life. Oh, Lord, I remember when you said you were going to do this in me and with me and through me. I'm going to continue to stand on that and declare it. Lord, you have me at my job to be a blessing. I thank you, Lord God. I am blessed and highly favored. And people are seeing you putting favor and blessing me. So, Lord, I thank you that I have favor, that you're using me for your glory. I'm not going to let the dream die. I'm going to continue to fan the flame and stir it up inside me. Because what God said, 
He will bring to completion because he's not a man that he shall lie. So, Lord, I'm trusting you. Even with everything going on and even the things I'm going through, I'm going to keep on trusting you, Lord. I'm going to keep believing you, Lord. I'm going to keep standing with you, Lord. You know, I've said this before. There's ministers out there that have just given through in the towel because things have gotten hard. There's people that once had a, a close relationship with God and, and through Jesus Christ, and they've thrown in the towel because it seems so hard. And they're wondering, where are you, Jesus? Where are you, Lord? Why haven't you broken through for me? Why have I not seen what you have promised me? Because there is a time and a season for everything, the Bible says in Ecclesiastes. There is a season for everything. You may not have reached your season yet. There's still work to be done. God is preparing you for the mighty the mighty outpouring, the mighty breakthrough, the mighty blessing. he got to prepare you for what's to come. And it's good. It is good. It is good. It is good. Now, I remember in Austin when we started the ministry and we bought this old church. Um, it was a little old broken down Baptist church building. And it seated maybe 50 people. And I remember when we bought it, and, and I remember we were preparing for it, and somebody came up to us and said, you know what, I believe God wants you to have something bigger. That's too small. But see, that wasn't, well, of course God wanted something bigger along the road, but you got to grow into your vision. We could not have supported a humongous building. We had the, the funds, and we had the uh, the, 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 the mean hat, the, the way of providing for it for that smaller building. We could have not paid the bills for something bigger. So we were blessed by the Lord with what we had and we grew into the vision. The same for you. Maybe you're believing God for something big, but you got to grow into the vision. He's preparing you for what's to come. If you get something bigger than you can handle, chances are you're going to fail at it. But he's preparing you for what's coming down the road. Are you with me this morning? Something big is coming your way, and he is preparing you for it. Amen? Hallelujah. 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 Go to Genesis 50. Now, it's all these chapters, it's all these years, there's a famine in the land, people are starving, and you can read the whole story, there's a lot to this. And the thing of it is, is Joseph's family came to Egypt, and they realized Joseph was now in second, com in second command. And so, Joseph was in a position, remember, when Joseph had that dream that his father and mother and brothers would bow down to him. That dream came true, wasn't it? It wasn't so that Joseph could say, nah, 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 I'm better than you are. He was put in a position that he could provide for his family and for the nation of Israel, or they would have starved to death because of the famine. He was put in a position. God is promoting you into a position that's going to affect more than you. i got to keep on saying that over and over. There is a community of people. You have a community of people that God has placed you in that he's going to use. Are you with me this morning? Or a family or whatever it is. There is a people God has placed you in to be a blessing. Can you say amen? He wants to use you. You're going, Pastor Trent, where's the Christmas? Where's the Christmas message? We're going to get there. Don't worry. Let's finish this up. Genesis 50, verse 15. It says, when Joseph's brothers saw that their father was dead, Jacob died, they said, what if Joseph holds a grudge against us and pays us back for all the wrongs we did him? So they sent word to Joseph saying, your father left these instructions before he died. Really? <laughs> They're afraid, aren't they? Your father left these instructions before he died. This is what you are to say to Joseph. I ask you to forgive your brothers the sins and the wrongs they committed in treating you so badly. Now please forgive their sins of the servants of the God of your father, when their message came to him, Joseph wept. He wept. 
His brothers then came and threw themselves down before him. Remember the dream, y'all? Remember the dream? It came to pass, didn't it? They bowed down to him, didn't they? There is a purpose for it. It says, they threw themselves down before him. We are your slaves, they said. But Joseph said to them, don't be afraid. Am I in the place of God? You intended to harm me, but God intended it for good. To accomplish what is now being done, the saving of many lives. So then, don't be afraid. I will provide for you and your children. And he reassured them and spoke kindly to them. Ooh, man. You know what? He could have had an attitude. He could have had revenge. He had the perfect opportunity to really have revenge towards him, but he didn't because Joseph realized there was a reason why he went through all those things. And it was to be a blessing. You are going through these things for a reason. Not because not God is bringing sickness on you or despair or all this thing, but it's the enemy trying to kill you before your purpose is fulfilled. Are, are you with me this morning? Go to Matthew chapter 1. Now let's get into the Christmas story for a few minutes. Matthew 1. Matthew 1. Keep the dream alive. <clears throat> Matthew 1 verse 18. Now this is how the birth of Jesus Christ came about. His mother Mary was pledged to be married to Joseph but before they came together, she was found to be with child through the Holy Spirit. Because Joseph, her husband, was a righteous man and did not want to expose her to public disgrace, he had in mind to divorce her quietly. But after he had considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, he had a dream, didn't he? The angel appeared to him in a dream. Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet. The virgin will be with child and will give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel. God, which means God with us. When Joseph woke up, he did what the angel of the Lord had commanded him and took Mary home as his wife. But he had no union with her until she gave birth to a son, and he gave him the name Jesus. He followed the instructions of the Lord through the angel. Let's go on for a few minutes. In chapter 2, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem, in Judea, during the time of King Herod, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, Where is the one who has been born King of the Jews? We saw his star. We saw his star in the east and have come to worship him. When King Herod heard this, he was disturbed as all Jerusalem was with him. Let's go on just to skip over to chapter or verse 7. It says, then Herod called the Magi secretly and found out from them the exact time the star had appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, go and make a careful search for the child. As soon as you find him, report to me, so I too may go and worship him. Not so, is it? As we know the story. After they had heard the king... They went on their way, and the star they had seen in the east went ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were overjoyed. On coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. They bowed down and worshipped him. And you know, and I... You know, when we see the nativity set, we always see the baby in the manger, and we see the three wise men as the three kings, and, and they come and bow down. But as the story goes, and it's revealing, Jesus was probably about two years old when the Magi showed up. He wasn't in the manger as the nativity 
chose. But I can see Mary answer the door, and there's, for those who have little ones, you probably know this, Catherine, when the door rings, the kids go running, don't they? I can see little toddler Jesus. This is my perception. He's about two years old. And I can see little Jesus coming to the door with his mother Mary. And as the three kings of the wise men, as some had called, and, and the magi show up and they see him, and they recognize, they really they realize that this is the one born king of the Jews. This little toddler, and it says they bowed down to him. This little toddler, they weren't bowing down to a um, toddler. They were bowing down to majesty, the king of kings, the one, the, the, the one who was born king of the Jews, the one who was uh, the son of God, the one they had heard about the, the virgin giving birth to the son of God. They bowed down to him. They bowed down to him. There was a reason he was born. They bow down. Praise God. They bowed down and worshiped him. Then they opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold, of incense, and of myrrh. And if having warned in a dream, that, and having been warned in a dream not to go back to Herod, they returned to their country to another route in a dream they had when they were warned. When they'd gone, when they had gone, an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream again. Get up, he said, take the child and his mother, escape to Egypt, stay there until I tell you, for Herod is going to search for the child to kill him. He didn't want to come and worship the child, he wanted to kill him. He felt threatened by the child. So he got up and took the child and his mother during the night and left for Egypt. When he stayed, they, where they, he stayed until the death of Herod. And so was fulfilled that the Lord had said through the prophet, out of Egypt I called my son. It says, when Herod realized that he had been outwitted by the Magi, he was furious. And he gave orders to kill all the boys in Bethlehem and in the vicinity who uh, were two years old or under. There's your proof right now two years old or under, in accordance with the time he had learned from the Magi. See, the devil is on the warpath. He wants to kill you. He wants to steal from you. He wants to destroy you because God has a plan for your life. He has a purpose for your life. Remember what Jesus said, the enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy, but I came to give you life and life more abundant. You know, you, once you've accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you're on your way to heaven. One day, you're going to be in heaven. But on your way to heaven, why not have the victory? Why not fulfill God's purpose and plan for your life? Why not allow the Lord to lead you and guide you and to show you favor so that you will have favor with man? Can you say amen? So don't think about ending your life. Don't think about throwing in the towel. Think about what's going on and, and begin to realize, ah, I get it. Now I know why the enemy's attacking me in this area. You know, maybe you're attacked during the night. You know what? That's the night when it really becomes demonic because you are resting, you are quiet, and the enemy starts attacking your mind. Have you ever been attacked in the night? Because you're still. And the enemy can attack your mind. So you need to realize... That the reason you come under attack is because the enemy is realizing something about you. There's something about you that he wants to get you out of the picture. He wants you to feel like you're defeated and, and to be discouraged and want to throw in the towel. But that's when you need to let the anger, the Holy Ghost anger rise up in you and say, you know what? I'm not giving up because I'm telling you what, devil, you've overplayed your hand. Now I realize what you're doing. You want me to go this direction when God is leading me this direction. That's why you're attacking me in this direction and you want me to go the other direction. But I'm telling you what, God has ordered my footsteps. I'm going this direction. God is going to fight my battle. God has already fight my battle. The enemy I thank you. You've already been the 
defeated at the cross. I thank you the greater one who lives in me is greater than you. I thank you I'm more than a conqueror. I thank you I'm victorious. I'm getting revelation today before I leave this building, before I leave this program. I'm getting revelation. The devil is a liar. I'm going to keep on fighting the good fight of faith. I'm going to keep on moving ahead. I'm going to keep on trusting God and believing God. I know His plans for me are good. I thank you, Lord. You didn't put me on this earth to be defeated and be discouraged and be sick and broke every single day of my life. I thank you, God. You have ordered my footsteps. I thank you, Lord. You have making a way. I thank you, Lord. You're providing. You're supplying all my needs according to your riches and glory. I thank you I will live and not die. I thank you that I'm strong and not weak. I thank you that I'm rich and not poor. I thank you today. I'm getting revelation. I'm going to keep on going. I thank you for the dreams and the visions that the Lord has given me. I'm not going to let them die. I'm going to fan the flame and cause them to be come forth and, to, and I'm going to be reminded of the dreams and I'm going to keep on trusting God and believing He's going to fulfill those dreams. Can you say amen? Let me just write these down. In 1 Corinthians 2 9, it says, However, as it is written, what no eye has seen, what no ear has heard, and what no human mind has conceived, the things God has prepared for those who love Him. God's already prepared it for us. And the devil is saying, He wants us to not receive what God has prepared for us. In Romans 8, 28, And we know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love Him, who have been called according to His purpose. Good things. In Psalms 3, or 32, verse 8, I will instruct you and show you the way to go. With my eye on you, I will give you counsel. The Lord will counsel us. The Lord will lead us. He will guide us. In Jeremiah 29, 11, we quote that a lot. It says, the Lord says, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Ryan, listen to what the Lord says to you. For I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. That's the word of the Lord for you, Ryan. And for those listening, right here is a word for the Lord for you. Right now to receive it. Aren't you so... I'm trying to say this without confessing bad things. Aren't you ready to put the enemy totally under your feet? Are you, I'm just going to say this, are you sick and tired of him messing with you? And you know what I'm talking about. Are you tired of having to wake up in the morning and encourage yourself or through the day and, and, and all these things and wonder what's, when things are going to change? You know what? We're going to cause things to change with the word of the Lord. We're going to start declaring the word of the Lord and things are changing. Yes, I'm a winner, not a loser. Yes, I got the joy of the Lord. Lord, I thank you for restoring the joy of your salvation. I'm going to use your word to as a weapon. I'm going to use your word to pave the way for what you have promised and what you have caused me to dream about the dream that you've given me. I thank you, Lord. I'm going to keep on keeping on because I'm tired of the devil messing with me and stealing from me and my family and friends. I'm done with all of that stuff because I'm a believer. You're a believer. We are the children of the Most High God. We are the blessed ones. Can you say amen? We are blessed. Not the non-believers. They look like they got everything going for them. They really don't. A billion dollars can't buy your salvation. A billion dollars or a million dollars, a hundred million dollars can't buy grace. It's a gift. You receive. I said it before and I'll say it again. When you leave this planet, you ain't taking that billion dollars. 
You're not taking your bank account. You're not taking your Rolls Royce. You're not taking your yacht. You're not taking your mansion. You're not taking your prestige. Well, I was known as this mighty singer, and, and I was the biggest star on this planet. When you leave, you're not taking that notoriety. You're, you're, wherever you go, that's where you're going to go, but you're not going to be like that. And those, you know, it's all right to, to, to have things. It's all right to, to be promoted. It's all right for those things. There's nothing wrong with those things. But you can't let them be your God. Jesus is your God. He promotes you. He's the one who raises you up. Put your trust in Him. Put your trust in Him. Praise the Lord. Well, keep your dream alive. Keep the dream of the Lord alive in your heart. Declare it. Be careful what you say about it. Be careful in who you share your dreams with. Because people will curse your dreams. They'll hate on you. And they'll talk about your dreams. I already deal with enough demonic stuff. I don't need somebody else talking against my dreams and my visions. That's why I'm careful who I share those with. I don't need any more open doors. I don't know about y'all. This morning, I'm believing that this is a powerful word. I believe this is a gift from God for you to stir you up, to keep on keeping on. You know what? Think about when you were really operating in all kinds of favor, when you were things, seeing things really happening, and then all of a sudden they dropped off. Well, you know what? I thank you, God, what you began in me, you'll bring to completion. Can you say Amen. Yes. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. What he did yesterday, he'll do today, and tomorrow, and the next day, and the next day, and the next day. That's how he is. He doesn't withhold any good gifts from his children. Amen? He's not withholding anything. Think about it. The enemy is on the attack. He comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But today, we're getting revelation. We're reminded, wait a second, I'm not going down for the last time. I thank you that I'm rising up on wings of eagles. I thank you, Lord God, you got so much more for me. Oh, so much more for you. Come on. Hallelujah. You may be at this age, but you know what? God, there's a lot more time that God has for you to fulfill. Can you say amen? Hallelujah. This morning, if you do not know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, and today you want to ask Jesus into your heart, if that's you, would you pray with me today? Would you say, Jesus, I confess that you are the Son of God, that you died on the cross, that your blood was shed for the forgiveness of my sin. Today, I ask you, Jesus, to come into my heart and be my Lord and Savior forever. Amen. You know what? There's family members that prayed that this morning. The Holy Spirit just quickened that to my spirit. They prayed that this morning. They accepted Jesus your family members, your friends. This morning, salvation is a package deal. By his stripes, you've been made whole. Whatever you are going through right now, I declare the name of Jesus, the stripes of Jesus, the blood of Jesus, the power of the name of Jesus, and I declare today, things are changing for you, for the best, and for the good. I thank you right now by the power of the Holy Spirit that He's stirring you up 
There's a fanning the flame of the visions and dreams that God has given you. Today is a day for you to rise up out of the pit. Rise up out of that prison. Rise up out of that bed. Rise up out of depression and oppression or whatever has got you down. It's time to rise up. Come on. There's a job to be done. There's a work to be done. There's a purpose to be fulfilled. There's something God has for you that He wants to complete in you and through you for His glory. Before you go spend eternity with Him, let's finish the job that we were put on this earth to do. In Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. Lift up your hands this morning. I release right now favor of God. I've been even experiencing some, you know, things at work that there's some blockage, there's some roadblocks, and, and I, you know what, I know what the enemy is doing. He's trying to stop the blessing, and for you too, he's trying to stop your blessing. But today, we're going to tear down that wall in the name of Jesus. It's coming down. The, the blessing of the Lord is being released right now. That favor is being released right now. When you were experiencing all that favor, now is the time for it to manifest again in your life. You know, oh, just like opening up the spigot of water, pouring out the faucet has been opened up. The blessings are being poured out and found your life and through you. In Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. Praise the Lord. I receive it this morning. How about you? Why don't you respond to the word? If you receive it this morning, tell the Lord you receive it this morning. Oh, I receive it this morning, Lord. I receive it. As we say goodbye to those watching, hallelujah. Don't forget this Wednesday is going to be our Christmas uh, service at 8 o'clock for those of you watching. If you're going to be here in person, we're going to start the music at 730 and have the message at 8 o'clock. Come and be a part of our Christmas service. We will not have service next Sunday. There'll be a message. Pastor Bob's going to put the program on. You'll see it on Sunday as well. Um, but I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord. Merry Christmas. God bless you. Share this program with those you know. Come on, let's spread the good news. Let's spread the gospel, the true gospel, the gospel of grace, the gospel of hope, the good news. It's good news, not bad news. And so right now, we say goodbye to you, and God bless you, and Merry Christmas. Amen. Amen. Did he